Divine Truth Paget Messages Discussions Discussions of individual messages received by James Paget between 1914 and 1923 from large variety of spirits. This is session 3, part 2 of the discussion, How Divine Love Enters the Human Soul, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing how divine love enters the human soul and the three parts of the human by focusing on the next message from Jesus on the subject, given to James Paget on the 8th of May 1916. This session was recorded on the 25th of July 2017 from 11.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Alrighty, do you want to read our next part then? Yeah. The only way in which the soul may become an inhabitant of the celestial spheres is by its obtaining of the divine love, and thereby becomes a partaker of the divine nature of the Father. And this can be accomplished only by the inflowing of the divine love, by means of the operation of the Holy Spirit, which is the instrumentality used by God to carry this love to the souls of men. Mm. Now there's so much just in that little <laughs> <laughs> There is again, yes. Yeah. There's some technicals as well, isn't there? There isn't is, there, there is. Mm. So, um, yeah. within it you're saying the, the soul can become an inhabitant of the celestial spheres. Mm -hmm. We can receive divine love and we can change our nature to be divine or of God. We can't change our nature. God's, and, love, God's yes. love does. <laughs> Important clarification. Yeah. Our nature can change. Yes. And we talked about this last week, didn't we? Yes. Um, but just it's just wow. I think that that's just wow. <laughs> you know. Well, it, it's, it, it's, it's indicative of God's planning, really, isn't it? It's like fancy, fancy creating a creature which is just an image of your soul but giving this creature the ability to function, have autonomous function and understanding and, and have its own awareness and its own cognizance of its even of itself. And that, that in itself is an amazing creation. Because mm. um, you think about what most men create, it's machines, you know, that, that yeah. doesn't have self-awareness. Yeah. Know? So we've got this uh, mach machine, which is really what the soul is of self-awareness, right? All, all being created by God. But then, then on top of that, giving it the ability to receive a part of the divine nature yeah. and transform into it like a transformer into <laughs> a different creature. Yeah. And um, that is a remarkable, that's a remarkable creation. You can see why the human soul is the highest of God's creations. Yeah. And I think, I think it's sort of easy in a way to hear you talk about that and go oh yeah 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 okay it, and think about it sort of conceptually outside of the emotion uh, of it all yeah applying it to myself like mm. when i was preparing this today's interview you know i just sat and let myself feel like wow my very nature my very kind of the the workings of who i am can actually transform it's like the the structure and the building blocks, as we talked about last week, you know, the metamorphosis kind of a thing, what would that actually feel like? And I suppose I kind of have some memory of what that feels like, but it's, I think it's beyond comprehension, really. Well, it's certainly beyond the human mind to comprehend. Yes. And this is why we need the soul uh, to understand even the process. Because the human mind's not really capable of even comprehending what that means, let alone, let alone actually do it. And you know, you you see that a lot when we talk to six fear spirits, don't we? When mm -hmm. we when we're conversing with them, you frequently see how they just like their mind is constantly going, "What? How is that? You know?" What? Yeah. And they're constantly asking questions about how it's possible, rather than just engaging the process. Mm -hmm. Frequently, they're more concerned about uh, what's actually going on. How is this possible? And, and not understanding a single word that's being said because of the limitation of the human mind to actually understand how it can all be possible. And so this is why we need God's love to even understand how it's all possible. Yeah. yeah. So is it correct to say that really we can't, we're talking here about a process with yep. our minds with our and minds. our intellect, yep. but we can't really have a conception of what it really means. Until you do it. Until 
we first receive God's love yep. and now a whole new awareness starts to be possible. Yes. It's still not um, guaranteed that the first part of God's love that I receive, that I will understand that my nature is being transformed um, or has, sorry, I should say, has the potential to sort of, well, yeah, there's two I don't things know. I, I think it's the first time you receive God's love, you do feel it in the moment. Yes. This powerful potential mm -hmm. but the problem is that we still have so many emotional injuries yep. that tend to then uh, dominate and control our thinking capacity that cause us to detune from the emotional process of the first time we receive God's love mm -hmm. and so therefore we tend to have a tendency to not remember the emotional side of it very easily yep. particularly at the beginning yeah but after time you, you you become more and more confident about it and therefore and more have more faith yeah. And then as a result of that, you know, it becomes you become very aware of how much you're changing and how different you have become. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but the other really important thing you introduce now at the end of this paragraph is the workings of the Holy Spirit and the yeah. fact that it is the instrumentality, or if we just say it more simply, the instrument yes. used by God to carry his love yes. to the souls of men. Yes, as we discussed in a third assistance group with people who attended, the the God's soul exists outside of the universe itself and therefore for outside of the material creations of what he created. Mm -hmm. And also God exists outside of the materialness, if you like, of the universe. God, God's soul is obviously made of a different kind of material than the universe itself or anything that exists within it. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is a, a very important point. How does God then get something that's a part of his soul that is not a part of the structure of the material universe or, or the spiritual universe or the soul-based universes, in fact, and not a part of the universe as it exists? How does he get that substance into beings, self-aware beings that are a part of that universe. Yeah. And what God had to do was create some a very complex mechanism, in fact, uh, based on a huge amount of mathematical laws to actually uh, create a conduit mm -hmm. which flowed from God. Uh, it's under the control of God, but it's also under control of the human. The conduit the, the end that connects to the human is under the control of the human. Mm -hmm. So God designed a whole heap of laws that uh, allowed that conduit to connect to the human. And then, and then for God's love to flow, God's substance of love to flow through that conduit mm -hmm. to the human. And that required, obviously, a large amount of laws and design for, for God to create the ability for that to occur. Now... It, once you start understanding that, when you start hearing the term Holy Spirit, instead of thinking, oh, well, you know, hum, ho, ho, hum, <laughs> it's, a, it's an amazingly complex piece of machinery, you could say, that is under God's control, but also under the human's control well, just on the other end. That in itself, that, that God created, designed and created something that is, it's, it's sensitive and reactive to both God and God's children mm -hmm. um, individually. Yes. <laughs> like that's a pretty massive feat of engineering, really, yes. if you think about it in yes. very concrete terms. Yes. Yeah. Now, there, there are things that are similar to it in the physical universe. If you drill down into structures, particularly into genetic structures and so forth, you can see similar energetic forms that get transmitted from one to the other and so forth. But but there's nothing in, compar in comparison to it yeah. uh, with the way God's Holy Spirit allows a substance of God. So you see there's many things in our body that allow the human soul's substance to uh -huh. control the replication process of the human body, for example, and, and those kind of things. But to actually have a substance that doesn't belong in the, this, you know, doesn't, is not naturally in the physical universe that God created and yet can enter it mm -hmm. and uh, and affect portions of his creations is a very remarkable creation in itself. So the Holy Spirit is actually one of God's highest creations mm -hmm. um, as well. And when you say you can find sort of analogies of it or, or uh, 
kind of similar workings mm-hmm. in the physical body. Are you referring to our physical body and the internal workings of the physical body? Oh, no, the connection between a spirit body and a physical body, for right. example, where you've yeah. got a spirit form and the spirit body's mind, for example, um, communicating information to the physical body through the cord, through the silver cord. So the silver cord, in a lot of ways, it's a cord that stre- it's an energetic pathway. It stretches. It, mm-hmm. it can uh, when we go to sleep every night. Uh, we are. It's a very long cord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're in a completely different uh, dimensional space. In fact, it crosses dimensional spaces. Yeah. So it's a very complicated piece of machinery. The silver cord. Yes. It, it crosses dimensional spaces from the spirit dimensions to the physical dimension. It, it's capable of communicating large amounts of information in very short periods of time and capable and also enables the capability to control the physical form mm. um, in, in complete through the operation of the brain and, and other nervous system type operations and chemical operations in the body. So it's a very complex piece of machinery, but it still exists communicating from one area of the physical universe to another area of the physical universe. And also, it's to me like it's so it's within the one universe, if you like, but also there's it's under the control of one entity. Here, you're talking about the Holy Spirit is sensitive and reactive to two separate entities. Like, I'm not God, not and just God two, is, is it? not it's me. God. And then every one of God's children, so that's what billions I mean. and billions and billions of entities. It's, that's <laughs> totally like far more. Um, sophisticated than yes. just the silver even though the silver and gold cords are like amazing. very sophisticated pieces of machinery yes. <laughs> the holy spirit that's yeah. something else entirely to Correct. me because it's so sensitive to individuals yeah. and between yeah. individuals and sensitive to emotion yeah sensitive to truth as, as we're well, going to talk about as yeah we talk about further yeah sensitive truth sensitive to emotion sensitive to sincerity yeah sensitive to a number of specific emotions actually yeah um, yeah, very complicated uh, mathematical formulas involved in creation of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. In fact, the Holy Spirit is one of the most complicated creations of God that can enter the material universe. Yeah. Um, yeah. In a lot of ways, it's possibly more complicated than the human the soul. Mm-hmm. In some, you know, in a lot of ways, because it it comes directly from God's soul, and mm-hmm. anything that comes directly from God's soul is far more complicated than the human soul itself. Mm. So, yeah, it, it's a, you know, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we mention it very briefly, but the reality is it's a very, very mathematically complex piece of machinery that allows the transmission of a substance from God to the human soul. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. Do you want to continue? Yes. As I have before said, this love never forces itself into the souls of men and comes only when men seek for it in sincerity and with effort. It is waiting for all men to receive it, but never comes into the soul of its own initiative and without invitation. Mm -hmm. So the important question is, how does it come into the soul and what must men do to induce its inflowing? Mm. Now, of course, in this message, I was talking to a man, so I use the word men, but yes, it's which is quite, common back in the you know in nineteen hundreds, of course. It's quite pronounced. But throughout uh, these two we're messages, talking here actually. about all humankind, women included, yeah. obviously. <laughs> Good, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah. So before we get on to the next part, I thought there were some crucial points that you made here. Sure, sure. So first up, love never forces itself. And we can say that generally for love in general, can't we? Correct. If it's real love. If it's real love. It, it never will... forces itself. Yeah. Um, and and when it comes to God's love, obviously. Obviously God's love same. is real love, so yes. it's never going to force itself. <laughs> <laughs> the second major thing that you said is that we must seek with sincerity. Yes. And without the sincerity... Uh, it's logical then to to uh, extrapolate or to deduce from what you've said here mm-hmm. that we ju- no matter what we tell ourselves, unless we're sincere, we can't receive love, even if somebody is loving us. Yes. 
And that's so that I find that quite interesting. Love never forces itself. So if I'm not sincere about receiving your love, mm -hmm. then even if I say, oh, love me, love me, you know. Which is an addiction. Which is an addiction. I'm therefore not love sincere. Me, love me, say that you love me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I'm never going to experience your love. Correct. Even if you were to meet an addiction, which we see in a lot of partnerships. Say, which is not love. Which if is I not meet love. an addiction, that's not love anyway. I can get all warm and fuzzy and you feel, say... You may feel good because your addiction's getting mad. Yes, but it's still not love. I'm being loved, but it's not real love. Mm. And and we're talking here about people, but the, the same applies with people and God. Of course. And very often we notice people get into so-called a relationship with God mm -hmm. and get all warm and fuzzy. Yeah. But it's not altering their nature. Not at all. So we can logically even deduce that they are not receiving Having a relationship with God. God's love. They're and receiving something from someone else. Yes. 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 Yep. And the third thing that you made very clear was that God's love comes as a result of our invitation. So it's us asking as an individual. Which makes sense with, from the first statement, which we said that God's love would never force itself upon yes. somebody. Obviously, you know, it's like, you know, do we bash the door down or do we <laughs> wait until somebody opens it and invites us in? And, um, you know, God's love will never bash the door down. God's love just waits and waits and waits and waits until somebody opens the door and invites the love in. Yeah. That's how God works. And in fact, uh, as you pointed out, all love works that way. Mm -hmm. God's love, of course, is the most pure of all loves, and therefore God's love is going to work that way to the most pure extent. Yeah. And uh, and it's interesting, too, that God's love is measuring the sincerity. It's not uh, the Holy Spirit, the operation, the law-based operation of the Holy Spirit measures sincerity. Mm. So that in itself is a clever little piece of machinery measuring <laughs> the sincerity. Yeah. But as we talked about in the third group, every emotion has a mathematical signature, mm -hmm. like every sound does and every you know, vision does as well have a mathematical signature. So every emotion has a mathematical signature. And so God has tuned <laughs> the Holy Spirit into the into the sincere, yeah, into the mathematical signature of the sincerity, yeah, and therefore allowing God's love to make God's Holy Spirit to make the connection to allow love to flow. Yeah, but uh, you know. At the end of the day, you can be as sincere as you want, but if you still haven't invited, that's right. It's still not going to work either. Yeah, and that's yeah. something that um, I know for myself. <laughs> I can be sincere about other things, mm -hmm. in fact, about truth, even about progress, and, and about progress. Well, like that. But because there's still um, a lot of grief in me and yeah. certain fears in me about the act of really longing, inviting, inviting, yeah. asking. Um, I still remain quite close to God's love. Yes. And a lot of people on earth have quite severe injuries regarding love. You know, they've been hurt in the past, as they say, not released that hurt. Mm. And as a result, they are very protective of their soul, very protective of themselves and uh, frequently do not want people, you know, to let love in. Mm. And those kind of people are going to really struggle until they work through those emotional injuries, going to really struggle to receive God's love. Mm. Because it, it, to receive God's love requires an openness of your heart and to open your heart, it requires trust. Yeah. And uh, it requires faith and trust and a number of other qualities. And unless you have these qualities of desire and trust, it's highly unlikely you're going to trust God enough to even bother to open the door mm. when God's love knocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not even really knocking, is it? It's, it's sort of like a, um, I often feel like it's like shutters that are closed. And if I generate like F will and desire to open, then there's like this attraction of God's love into, into my soul. But I have to... Yeah, but God's love is opening. knocking to a degree in the way that God's expressed love in other ways, you know. Yes. So God's love's knocking in the sense of trying to influence us to want to. And I say God's love doesn't influence us, but God, because of the way God loves, God's love using whatever God can use, the laws and other things as well, you know, also spirits who have reached that condition, he's constantly using 
all the tools at his disposal to knock on us. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not the actual love that knocks, but, no. but the reality is that there are a lot of other things uh, that God's created in the universe that are knocking, including our consciences, mm -hmm. that are knocking on us, trying to get us or motivate us to, to desire God's love. Um, so, and as a, as a result of that, we frequently, you know, that, that's how I knew in the end that God's love was available mm. like, because, because there were all these other things indicating it was available. Yeah. We'll talk more about that as the message goes on. Mm. What do you think about the, do you feel that a person is in a relationship with God before they receive God's love? Well, you could say we have a loosely coupled in a relationship with God before then. Mm -hmm. um, when I say loosely coupled, what I mean is that God has created the universe around us. God's created all the things necessary for our potential and growth. He's created the food we eat, the, you know, the, the genetic structure of everything that we exist by. He's created the ability for us to be self-aware and all these other things. These are all expressions of God's love generally mm -hmm. for humanity. As I said in the first century, God makes it, makes it the sun shine, you know, for the wicked and yeah. the righteous, you know, yeah. and that's an expression of God's love too, in a general sense. But that's not the personal love that through the Holy, through which the Holy the through that flows through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It, it, it's more of a general love for all of humanity. All of His children receive this love. But, but whether we, uh, we all benefit from the love, I should say. Yeah. We don't necessarily, and we receive the benefits of the love, but that's not the same as receiving the love itself. Yes. Um, and so that's why I say it's loosely coupled. It's like, <laughs> well, and if I could use, say, a physical example to mm -hmm. draw out what I'm aiming at. Um, so before I met you again mm -hmm. in this life, um, we were soulmates, mm -hmm. but I had no conscious awareness of you, and I certainly wasn't aware of receiving anything from you or giving anything to you. Yeah. And then we met, mm -hmm. and now suddenly I'm aware we're relating, but not we're not exchanging love. We there's words, there's some emotions, um, there's truth, if you like, um, between us. Yeah. That we, you know, using apparatus yeah, to, 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 determine. to determine. Using our intellect. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's a third state where my heart is open, yours is open, and now there's a love exchange between us. Yeah. Am I in a relationship with you in each of those three states and there's just a different quality to the relationship? I think so. So, so is, it, is that... A, an analogy that applies state. to our relationship with God. Of course, of yeah. course, yeah. Okay. Like, so in the first state, you know, I was conscious, uh, you know, initially both of us were unconscious of, of our other halves. Yeah. And then I became conscious of our other half. So after that, some things start flowing out of me towards yourself. And then uh, then you become conscious, you know, mm -hmm. or, or intellectually that, it, that it's the truth, but still not open emotionally. So that, that means that is a new state. That's a growing part of the relationship, but it's still not completion. Yeah. And then there's the sharing of love, which yeah. is love flowing back and forward mm -hmm. between the two halves of the soul. And that's obviously a completely different state. Now, when can you say the relationship actually began? Well, the, big, the relationship began when we were completely unconscious of it and God created it. Mm. That's when it actually began. And the same really applies with God's relationship with all of his children. The relationship really began, you could say, when God created all of his children. You know, from that moment on, God's love was expressed and that's and, how we all got created. And, and through the workings of the universe. And which God also created. So that was all a way that God was really uh, Expressing God's connected love. to us. Yes, but... but yeah. There's not the personal yes. aspect of the relationship there, yeah. and never can be, in fact, yeah. until there's a place of self-awareness. Mm -hmm. and, and unless there's a place of self-awareness, the personal relationship doesn't exist. And in the minds of the person who are not aware, yeah. it never it will exist until such a time as they become aware. Mm -hmm. So you could say the same thing applies between the soulmate halves and, the, and also between God. The, the difference being, though, 
that being soul halves as we are, there is always a point in time in the future that you would become aware at some point through growth mm. that the other half does exist mm -hmm. and therefore an exchange of energy or exchange of love can begin occurring. That's not the case with God. Yeah. Um, and the reason why is the substance that we have to receive to receive God's love is a completely different substance than the human soul. Whereas the, the substance we receive when we receive love from our other half mm -hmm. is the same substance as we're used to giving. And so they're completely different substances. And, and so therefore there are similarities yep. uh, between our relationship with God and our relationship with our soulmate. But, but you can't use the same analogies yeah. with everything there because there's God's general love that God has for all humanity and all the things God's done for us and continues, by the way, to do for all of humanity. And that will never cease. You know, God's, God's love never ceases in that regard. But what we're speaking about here is the individual relationship based love where you become aware mm -hmm. that God actually wants the relationship with you personally yeah. and that you can receive a, sub, a substance from God personally and that that substance is going to transform you personally. Mm -hmm. That's very, very different to what God has done yeah. for all humanity. <laughs> One requires required nothing from ourselves, no, no action, no thought, no awareness, no mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. The other requires definite action, definite thought, definite awareness, definite growth, definite desire, definite sincerity. Mm. So one, they're very, very different in the way those two things operate. Yeah. And mm. I was thinking a little bit of our listeners there because I know certain people have asked me about this topic and I reflect on my own progress. And I bring this up because I want to come back to it as we talk about other points in the, in the message. Mm -hmm. um, when I consider my own say relating with god yep. um i've gone through phases of being very opposed and definitely not wanting to know god's truth mm -hmm. or not wanting to receive anything from god mm -hmm. thinking god will be demanding and so you know, not feeling anything. oppressed by mm. this prospect of just another relationship <laughs> you know, like, which a lot of times comes from the oppression from our parents of course but, yeah i'm yes. feeling like every new person is in my life is just another set of duties i can't do more <laughs> exactly and that god's going to demand the most from us of course that's yeah, a well, God's like this infinite dude. Like, man, how much is God going to want from me? Exactly. You know, that, that kind of fair yeah. of thinking. Yeah. To then gradually sort of opening up to divine truths, if you like, about the operation of God's laws. Yeah. What my attractions, what God might be trying to help me to see via my attractions. What 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 is my conscience telling me? And what is what is my sense if I desire more of my emotional self, I seem to become more sensitive to more issues of love. And that seems to be something that God's trying to help me with. I'm still not receiving God's love, but I'm not opposed to hearing truth and learning in an indirect way from God. Mm -hmm. and or even a direct way through your conscience, because that yeah. is a direct way to yes. hear truth from God. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and even through the operation of the laws like my attractions are showing me yeah mm. so so in that way um i feel like i'm kind of relating with god but it's sort of via long distance <laughs> well it's it's not uh, it's, indirectly it's, a, rather. it's in it's relating with a person without there being a love-based exchange yes which is which is very very different um than so it's like it's like having a relationship uh with a f so called friend compared to loving the friend. Yeah. You know, you, you can basically, uh, it, before you really love a person, they are an acquaintance. And yes. and so for most people, you know, people go through this relationship stages with God, I suppose you could say the first stage generally is a lack of awareness that it even exists. Right the way through, and then they, usually the second stage is, oh, I've become acquainted with the fact that I can have a relationship with God. <laughs> yeah. And I've become acquainted with the fact that God probably exists. And yeah. probably, you know, having all of these sort of probable feeling, uh, you know, possibility feelings, I suppose, would be the best way of putting it. And, but that's still not having a relationship. Having a relationship is a, is a heart-based feeling, emotional-based process that in the end you know exists between yeah. the two of you. It's not. It's, it's, not it, it, it's not something that you think exists. Yeah. It's not something that you assume exists or mm. any of those kind of things. Yeah. But they are stages in yeah. the development of the relationship, obviously. Yeah. You no. must first 
think it might exist before you will try <laughs> receiving it. Yeah. No, thank you for clarifying mm. that because I think that's uh, when we say we want a relationship with God or we have a relationship with God. It, yeah, so you could say you could say in summary that most people have a relationship with God in some way in the sense that God has done a whole heap of things for us uh, whether we are aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. right, so so you, in some ways we are relating yeah. to, to God. But reality of that is that usually we're just relating to God's creations and yes. not and not seeing that actually these creations came from God. Hmm. Once we have the personal relationship, yeah. now we're relating with the actual creator. Yeah. And we can see that everything God has done, including the creation of who we are and our personality, our nature and all those things, they're all a part of what God has done for us. Yeah. And we start seeing it on a very much more personal level then. Yeah. And and then we start feeling some levels of appreciation, some mm -hmm. desire to have a relationship with the very person who did these things for us. Yeah. Yeah. So there's plenty of six fear spirits who believe in God. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, many the majority of them do. There are still some six fear spirits who who don't. Yeah. Who, who are atheists, but it's a very uncommon uh, mm -hmm. condition in the six fear compared mm -hmm. to Earth. Um, but even though they the majority believe in God, unfortunately, the majority still don't have that personal relationship. Yeah. So they just see what God has done for them. Mm -hmm. and interact with what the creations are that God has done for them without really feeling very much about the relationship specifically with the very creator of those particular mm. things. Yeah, and, and just one final analogy that occurred to me as you're speaking, it's like the two of us living together, mm -hmm. treating each other really well, impeccably, friendly, kind, uh, caring, considerate, yep. you do great things. I really appreciate those things, the meal or the, yep. you know, the whatever it is you're doing. Yep. Uh, I'm the same yep. and you really appreciate those things. Yep. But we don't have... Uh, a personal, a, well, emotional... The, the other state is where I just feel I'm in love with you and you're in love with me. We still have externally looks the same, but there's a... Now I can feel your nature. I know why you're doing things as well. I'm yeah. engrossed in you. I'm feeling great. You really want to know the person. Yeah. And not just see their motivations. Yeah. You want to know their motivations, know them inside out, really, don't you? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Very different state. Yes. Very different state. Yeah. And of course, the same kind of thing applies with our relationship with God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right. Lovely. Please continue. Okay. There is only one way, and that is by the opening up of the soul in such a manner that this love, when it comes in response to sincere seeking, may find an entrance and a condition of development that will cause it to find lodgment and abiding place, harmonious and satisfactory to the qualities of its own existence. Of course, man cannot of himself open up his soul to this inflowing, for while he has great power, yet the will is not sufficient nor has he any other inherent qualities that will enable him to place his soul in such a condition as to make possible the work of the Holy Spirit in causing the love to flow into the soul. Mm. Okay, so this is really how the soul receives divine love. Yep. And you, you say some very important things. So, in Some of which this, seem a bit contradictory. Yes. To what we've already said. Yes. Which we need to explain. Yeah. There's a few, a few times that happens in this message. Yeah. So the first part, though, if we can talk about that, is about the opening up of the soul in such a manner that this love, so God's love, mm -hmm. when it comes in response to sincere seeking, may find an entrance and a condition of development that will cause it to find, find lodgment and abiding place harmonious and satisfactory to the qualities of its own existence. Yeah. So. <laughs> very long-winded statement. It's, it's very long. And do you want to talk first? So we talk about a condition of development. So it's basically here you're saying, aren't you, that um, I must be sincere in my seeking, but also there must be a certain condition of development within me for the love to enter. Mm. Is that what you're saying? I am. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and that within for it to enter it had and find a place to sort of lodge or live inside of me mm -hmm. and remain there and remain there yep. there must be in this condition it, my condition must be harmonious and satisfactory to mm. the qualities of the love's own existence so to the qualities of the love itself uh, is that correct well no it's to its existence not to the love itself yes so to sorry for it to continue to live there <laughs> or exist there yes and once it once it has found qualities that match its potential for existence now it can continue to stay there even if the person is not aware that it's there yes so that's an irony too man there's so much right. in this to talk about so there's yeah. a lot to do here about the separation between the human soul's condition this, the intellectual brain of the spirit mind uh -huh. and its condition and the brain or physicalness of the physical body and its condition there's a lot of unfortunately there's a lot of separation between those three conditions because we we live in a very unaware state particularly on earth mm -hmm. live in a very unaware state of our true soul's condition both in a positive and negative direction unfortunately like you know we we are more conscious in our sleep state of our real condition than we are uh, in our awake state, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So we're not very awake in our awake state. <laughs> you know, our earthbound state, the time when we're not sleeping, yeah. we're not really as aware. And this is why sometimes dreams feel very much more uh, real uh -huh. in the sense of, um, you know, there's some experiences we have in our sleep state that do feel very much more real and the emotions feel very much more raw. And the main reason why that is, is that there's less attenuation from this. There's no attenuation now from the memory of the dream and the spirit state, mm. whereas there is a large amount of attenuation for most people between the spirit state and the physical state yep. that cause them to not be consciously aware of their true feelings about things. Yeah. So people on earth can have huge amounts of rage and not even be aware of it. Mm -hmm. They can be, they can have huge amounts of you know, other emotions, positive and negative, lust and other emotions, and then other emotions more positive than that, you know, desire and other things and not be aware of it in their awake state, mm -hmm. um, but be aware of it in their sleep state, mm -hmm. in their soul spirit state. Yeah. So th that's the first problem is that, is that, you know, frequently we believe things in our physical state that have no bearing to reality at any, at any soul level. Mm -hmm. And then other times we believe the opposite, you know, th bad things about ourselves in our sleep, in our awake state that actually have no bearing in reality to our soul's condition either. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it works on both directions um, in that regard. And that's a lot due to the fact that we're not tuned into our soul. Yeah. We, we, you know, from a very young age on earth, we are detuned from our emotions, uh, purposefully detuned. Mm -hmm. We're educated to control emotion, control function, using control of emotion and so forth. And this causes us to be very, very detuned from our real feelings. Yeah. and therefore our real sincere desires and emotions. But to just really hone in on the point you're making, yep. you're talking about condition there and our awareness of condition. Yes. But really what you're saying here, what I take from what you're saying here is, it's not just going to be, I have to develop or attain a certain condition before love will be received within me. Yes, and the condition specifically relates to a number of different points. Okay. The first point is that I must desire it. Mm -hmm. The now, love. The love. Yeah. Now, most people on earth think they want to be loved. Yeah. But they don't actually desire love. They're very protective. They're mm -hmm. very protective of their soul. They feel they've been hurt in love. They're not releasing the hurt. The hurt, uh, as it develops over years, usually it does develop over years on earth, you get to a stage where you're so hurt now in love that you pretty much block everybody's love. Yep. You know, you're trying to stop getting involved in a love-based relationship with anybody. Mm -hmm. And you see this happening a lot. And it's becoming more and more prevalent, particularly in Western society now, where more and more people are living alone, yeah. which is an indication that they've blocked their hearts to love uh, yeah. quite, quite intensely yeah. and living you know, lives where they don't have to love. Or, yeah. or lives where there's no real true love-based or heart-based or soul-based connection with another individual. Yeah. And, and this is a big problem. So, so you can see that for the majority of people on earth, there's firstly a lack of desire to be loved and a lack of desire to love. Now, 
for the uh, God's love to have a find a place in your soul to be able to remain, mm -hmm. there has to be a desire to love and a desire to be loved. Mm. So that that's one of the conditions I'm referring to here when I say it needs to find entrance and a condition of development to find yeah. lodgment. This is one of the conditions of entrance, and that is the person must have a true, sincere desire to be loved, to be not loved. not an addictive love me so that I get what I want from you. So I feel better. Or so I feel better. None of that, because that's not what this what pure pure love's about. This is a true condition of feeling in an open-hearted way that you, you want to love and you want to be loved and that all or a lot of the emotional injuries that you've accumulated over your lifetime have been resolved enough for you to say no matter how much pain i might receive by being loved and no matter how much pain i might feel by loving someone and not being reciprocated i still want to love right and, and so that requires, you know, that condition needs to be developed within the person. God's love doesn't prepare you for that condition, but that's the condition it has to find in order to remain. Which is, which that's is a not, significant condition. Yes, it's not little. <laughs> yeah, it's not, a, it's not a little thing to do that. For most people on earth, they've been severely impacted from the time of birth onwards and even before birth in many cases mm. onwards severely impacted by love of parents and then love of a partner and so forth to such an extent that they have so much hurt so many hurts within them that even when they're now in a relationship they they're not they're not really there in their heart mm. you know, and and this is a major problem god with god you're going to have to be there in your heart for the love to find lodgment and it's not just hurt that can cause this problem, is it? It's also entitlement and demand, demand and distortion of what love is. Being given too much uh, yeah. in your childhood, yeah. uh, which is actually not an act of love either. No. You know, a lack of responsibility and other things can cause the condition where you basically believe you should get everything and you shouldn't have to give anything. That mm -hmm. can cause the condition. Mm -hmm. So that there are many, many reasons why the love might not be able to find lodgment yeah. in the soul. That's based around our attitude to love itself. Mm -hmm. The second area, which is a primary area that uh, people, you know, don't get into the right condition is to do with sincerity. Yep. And again, this issue comes from a, a large, long-standing problem right from the time before we were born, even most of the time, but usually shortly after birth, we're taught to not be sincere. We're taught the way you get things is by not being sincere. Yeah. The way you get off the hook is by not being sincere. The way you avoid punishment is by not being sincere and so forth and so forth. So, so we learn to develop the facade, the, mm -hmm. the, the thing that we present to the world, which is a complete lack of sincerity. Now, from God's perspective, he is not going to interact with our facade mm. at all. Mm. So you can imagine yourself to really want something in your facade and really just be an addictive anger-based demand mm -hmm. and have nothing to do with what your heart really wants. Yeah. And, and also nothing to do with whether what you really want is, is sincere. Yeah. Is, it, is it going to benefit others as well as you? Is it, is it, does it have equality in it? Does it have ethics in it and morality mm -hmm. in it? Does it have any of these things? Well, well, if we're not sincere, all of those things uh, are not going to be present in yeah. various degrees. Yeah. So now we've got two problems. We've got the issue of the condition, the, the love needs to find a place where it can reside inside of our soul, but the only way it can find a place, and this is notwithstanding the third state, which is desire or faith. Yes. So, so we're just talking about the love itself and the sincerity at this point, which are the two, uh, two yeah. big issues that people yeah. have not receiving God's love. The love issue is all about how we feel about love yeah. and how we feel about love has been over the years severely distorted yeah. by our experiences of lo so-called love on mm -hmm. the planet. And as a, as a society, as a society and, and as a global community, it's all distorted. It's yeah. all distorted globally, but it's yeah. also distorted individually. We've had yes. personal experiences with our parents and with people we've fallen in love with over the course of the life where, where that we've had, where we've had some kind of emotional connection with them that have disappointed us in different ways and have harmed us in different ways and so forth and have caused pain for us in different ways. And, and as a result of all of that, we've learnt to bundle up our true soul-based feelings, put them to one side and then look primarily at getting a relationship that satisfies a lot of external conditions and a lot of addictions, but is not really love. Yeah. And therefore, 
it's mostly codependent. Yeah. Uh, and that's not love either. So there's that one issue. There's yeah. a second issue of sincerity mm-hmm. where we're taught again from a very young age to not be sincere, mm-hmm. to, to avoid sincerity, to avoid truth, to put on a fa- face, put on a facade, to display this facade of the world and to even in the end believe that that's the person we are. We yeah. even go that far yeah. to believe that that's the person we are. Yeah. And, and those two things are anti the reception of God's love. God, God's love cannot find lodgment in a soul that is mostly combined with those two things. Yeah. And that's notwithstanding the third primary issue, mm-hmm. which is desire. Yeah. Right. A pure, a sincere, pure desire for it. Now, to have desire, you've got to have faith. Yeah. Faith is, a, is like a, an essential part of this process. Mm-hmm. Now, what are we talking about faith in? We're talking about faith in God. Faith that God's goodness exists, faith that God has love to give, faith that we can receive it, and all of these kind of things. Yes. Now, again, you can see for the majority of humanity, particularly now, you know, the more modern our society becomes, the more dependent on so called science we become. Because yep. all, all of what God does is scientific, but unfortunately, we're just focused on the physical form of science. Yep. And the more we become focused on the physical body, the physical science, the physicalness of our being, we start detuning from this aspect or this quality of faith in God, desire for God, right? And in detuning from this desire, we now are not opening the door to love entering. Yep. So now there's our third primary problem. If you can resolve those three primary problems, you are guaranteed to receive God's love every time you ask for it. Mm. So if just, you, but but God's love is not going to solve those problems for you. Yeah. So so to clarify, in order to receive God's love, I have to do some work. Mm-hmm. Now, which is why I've said there, it comes from effort. In the previous paragraph, we remember yes, said, you said it, it comes with sincerity seek, and with effort. <laughs> you said it comes only when men, when people mm-hmm. seek for it in sincerity and with effort. Yes, and yes. this is the effort part. This is the effort part of the equation. <laughs> the effort part is getting the soul into a condition where the love can enter and find lodgment. Yeah, yeah. And and that is not done by the love itself because the love hasn't entered yet. Yeah. So it has to be done, and it can't be done by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can only make the contention, the connection, once we've done these things once too. Once we've done it. So it has to come from something, something else, something within oneself. Yes. So, so to clarify, um, we have to do some things, or, or our soul must be in a state that is harmonious. So it doesn't have to be the same as God on issues. In fact, that would be that would be impossible. impossible. It's impossible to be the same as God on all issues. Yes. Yep. So no matter how much I listen to the Divine Truth videos Makes and no go, difference. yep, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it, that's actually not going to help me to receive God's love. No, it can it, it can do things. Yes. There's certain influences it can have, which we'll talk we about. We should later. talk about next. Yeah. But but no, it can't actually do the job. The intellectual kind of repetition alone can't no. do the job. No. But what you're saying is what has to be present is uh, a desire to be loved and to correct, a desire to correct any injuries I have about love. Yes, so if we can break it into those three things that I've broken into. The first one is all about my attitude to love. Yes. You know, if I have an attitude to love that I don't want it, then obviously I'm not going to receive it. If I have an attitude to love that I've been hurt in the past and I don't want to get rid of all that hurt, then I'm Mm -hmm. probably not going to receive it. I've got to be willing to get rid of some of the hurt before I receive it and so forth. So the first section is my attitude to love. Yes. Whether it's God's love or another person's love doesn't really matter. Usually they're both the same. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. And the second thing is about um, am I sincere? Truth really, isn't it? Yes. It's it's really about truth. Yeah. Sincerity, truth, ethics, equality, morality, but it's all surrounding this truth issue, basically. Do yes. I want to be truthful? Do I want to be equitable? But not only that, do I want to be truthful with myself? Yeah. Do, do I really want to know where I'm at? Do yeah. I, you know, this is a key part. To yeah. it. Sincerity is about what's really going on in me compared to what I what hope is going on <laughs> <Yeah>. in me. <laughs> Am I willing to get real about that? And I, yeah. 
and and that you know often is not what we want to do. In fact, in fact, we've been trained from childhood to not do that, yeah. and we've been rewarded from childhood yeah. to not do that. You know, when did you get your lollies after you screamed and cried and somebody gave you it to pacify you? Generally, yes, right. That's being rewarded for bad behaviour. God does not reward bad behaviour. Yeah, right. So we've been taught from very young ages that rewarding bad behaviour is a way to silence somebody. Rewarding bad behaviour is a way to, uh, you know, and we've been taught ourselves that if we engage things badly, that's when we get what we want. Mm. You know, the so there's a lot of problems that. with that. That's yeah. not none of that sincere, of course. No, yeah. Okay, and the third thing you mentioned was faith. Yes, which we specified in our assistance group, which was the aspiration or desire uh, driven. It's desire driven, you know. So faith. Yeah. Faith is something that it has to exist in the human mm-hmm. uh, as a desire to receive before reception can occur. Yeah. In other words, we've got to open the door yeah. and want to open the door yeah. before we can receive. Yes. Yeah. And so you really the reason I want to really revise these things with you, and as I mentioned in our first video, these two discussions are a precursor really to me wanting to now start the FAQ series based on our education in love assistance groups. So the FAQ about the frequently asked questions about the assistance groups that we've just done. Yes. Yeah. And basically here you're saying in order for us to get ready to be able even to receive God's love with, into us, we have to make some major shifts yep. with regards to love, truth and faith. Yes. So we're going to have to change. Now, if we think back to our... When, when we talk about truth, you can see the aspect of truth is really truth and humility, isn't it? Because sincerity is all about coming to terms with what I really am right now. And you can see that not only involves truth, but also involves humility. humility. I need to be willing to see yes. what I really am. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And feel honestly how I really am. Yeah. And so, as I was saying, we've got these issues with love, truth... Humility, not only to get real about how I am and feel how I am, yep. but also we know in order to change, we have to feel some things emotionally we as well. We have to be willing to change. We have to be willing to change. As well. Yes. And the aspects of faith. Yes. Now, all of those topics are the key things that you focused on in our very first assistance group in the series. Yeah. Um, and that wasn't by accident. <laughs> no. no, nothing's by accident, as people will find out. <laughs> but as this message tells us, you know, that was because these are the key things we need to do if we're yeah. actually going to open up to receive God's love. Yeah, so this particular paragraph is about sort of broken into two parts, isn't it? And we've discussed the first part, yeah. and that is that the soul has to find, you know, it has to prepare for itself mm-hmm. a place where the love can exist yeah. and and the love itself, God's love, cannot prepare that place for you. That has to be done through your own effort. Yeah. Right? And, and you know, that's the thing that you can change. You can't force God's love into your soul. Mm. It, it can only come through a place of invitation. Yeah. You, you can't sort of use intellectual willpower to force the love to enter. That's not to try and get it all right, yeah. to try and be perfect so then you'll be worthy. You know, or even or... to work hard to be perfect yeah. in God's opinion, to be worthy to receive the love. That's not how it works. Yeah. And everybody who, everybody who hears divine truth eventually, usually at the beginning, tries that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for, for various periods of time, usually for tens of years, usually. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try, try. You know, after a while they give up on that because it doesn't actually work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, and that's why the majority of people who have heard of God's love but, but have not had it change their life, have uh, that, the reason why that hasn't changed their life is because they haven't received it. And the reason why they haven't received it is that there's a problem with one of those three things, mm-hmm. or usually all of them. Mm. Uh, a problem with love itself, a problem with sincerity, truth, and humility, or a problem with um, the faith, faith. the yeah. desire. Yeah, mm. yeah, awesome. Mm. So maybe then we can move on to the second statement because it seems to almost contradict what you just said. Of course. 
<laughs> of course, he says, of course. Of course. <laughs> Is that because you just enjoy being contradictory? No, no, I feel that, uh, you know, Padgett by, wasn't too open from this point on. <laughs> so it was difficult to give him this message. But uh, this second part, I'm referring specifically in context to something that the okay. majority of people uh, read it poorly mm -hmm. and do not understand that I'm referring to this particular okay. context. You know? So why don't I read the statement and yeah. then if you'd be happy to clarify it. Um, Man cannot of himself open up his soul to this inflowing for while he has great power, yet the will is not sufficient, nor has he any other inherent qualities that will enable him to place his soul in such a condition as to make possible the work of the Holy Spirit in causing the love to flow into the soul. Mm. Now, here you've said that the Holy Spirit causes the love to flow into the soul and that... that well, uh, yeah, well, that's person, what it seems like I'm saying. Yes, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> a person themselves can't open up their soul, uh, yeah, whereas we just sort of in, talked about let's how... Let's look at it yeah. in context. It, yeah. it seems like almost a direct contradiction of my previous statement, Yeah, but, it, but it's not. What I'm saying here is that humankind can't, through an effort of will, cause the love to flow into their soul. Right. Yep. So they can't. But and when you say by will, are you meaning willpower or are you meaning uh, will? You, you can't. I'm saying can't by make, will or willpower. It doesn't matter. I can't make you love me. Will is about God your current me. condition. Yep. Right. As we've explained in our third assisted group, will is our current condition. You can't. You can't make God's love flow into your soul through any effort that requires you utilising will or willpower. Mm. You can't because that's not how it flows. Yeah. It does not flow into souls using will or willpower. Mm -hmm. What it does is it flows into souls. As I said in the previous statement, it flows into souls if there's a condition to find lodgment. Yes. Which is about the, and this, so that's all about the love-based condition. Do the, do the person want love and whatever? Yeah. Then there's also the condition of sincerity. Yes. And really the condition of desire. Yeah. These things are required mm -hmm. to, to before the love can flow. And the love naturally flows when those conditions are met. So it's not through going, oh, please God, please God, give me love, give me the love, yeah. right? When you have no desire to change those three things. Yeah. Right? That's or one important. of those three things. Mm -hmm. It's about just getting your soul into condition where it merit meets the, these conditions of reception. Yes. Once the conditions of reception are met, the Holy Spirit makes a connection, in goes the love. Yeah. So the love itself flowing is not under the control of men specifically. Mm. It's under the control of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit determines whether the love flows in I the see. end. It's it's got the maths equation, it's not got, us. It's got yeah. the maths equations and all the other it things. It knows engaged. when it's real. It knows when real. everything is real. It knows when the condition will be where the soul. It knows when the soul has been prepared, lodgment wise. Yeah. It knows that the condition of sincerity is there. It measures it, and knows. So it knows there's a desire for truth. It knows there's a desire for humility, a desire for change, and it knows that and can feel. It measures desire. Mm. It measures the desire for it to flow. Yeah. And once those conditions are met, right, and these are conditions of preparation in the soul, yeah. not effort. Yes. They are, when I say effort, the effort is in the preparation. Yes. Not in the control of the flow. Yes. And so, so if you, we just if you marry that, that with my previous paragraph, yeah. Yeah. I said it does require effort. Yes. Right? Sincerity and effort. The effort is the preparation you need to yeah. do. Creating the condition where love can enter and be sustained. In where there. you even want it. Yeah. Where you even want it to enter yeah. in a sincere manner. Yeah. Right? If you don't want it to enter in a sincere manner, it cannot enter. Mm -hmm. no, there's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is change your condition, and that yeah. is done through desire. All you can do is change your condition. Now the conditions are right. Yeah. Now the Holy Spirit, which controls the flow of love, connects, bang, flows, love, love flows into the soul. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying, that's why it might appear that there's in this statement some kind of contrary or contradictory information. Yeah. But the reality is 
I'm really saying that humankind, through an effort of will or willpower, doesn't matter which one of those two, mm -hmm. you will not receive God's love because unless you get the conditions right, mm -hmm. that's the thing you have control over, mm -hmm. not your will or willpower. So I can't sit there in any state. I, I, I might be in a perfected natural man state and try using willpower yeah. or will to force the love to flow. Sorry, it is not going to flow yeah. because it doesn't meet the conditions. Yeah. Right? And this is what I'm saying is that humankind in their developed state and or undeveloped state, right from the hills to the six sphere condition, you can hope and you can willpower yourself into it and you can be as moral as you want and or as moral as what you think God wants yeah. and as ethical as what you think God wants yeah. and you can do all of these other things and it's still not flow yeah. because the condition is not right for yeah. it to flow. Yeah, and and the condition is such that we have the right attitude towards love, truth, change, we're willing to change, yeah. and we have faith. And sincerity. And sincerity. True sincerity. You know, yeah. what we're reflecting to God is the exact feelings we have, not something that we think God wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. We're reflecting in our lives even, the exact feelings we have, not what we think other people want to hear. So you're saying it doesn't matter what else we do as a human being, it, no matter what other strategy we try or whatever, whatever other way we try to assimilate what we think God wants. or Whether that be through knowledge. You know, a lot yep. of people believe by coming along to Divine Truth sessions and getting a lot of knowledge, then that's going to open up the God's love. It, it can help develop some conditions, yeah. but even the conditions are not going to change just by listening. Yes. Well, it's even like me. I can I can speak about God's truths and feel they're true. <laughs> it's no question in me. But unless I'm willing to have a shift in my, specifically for me, about love, yeah, but see, I would argue that if you can talk about God's truth and, and say that you have no qualms, qualms about them yeah. being God's truth, then why is there a block to God's love? <laughs> it's only certain ones of God's to me, truth. To yeah. me, this is a state of facade. Yeah, yeah, true. If, if the love isn't flowing, then you definitely have qualms about God's love. Yes. And therefore, you definitely have qualms about God's truth. Yes. You don't necessarily believe. Well, what, don't believe you... God's truth about love. Absolutely, Correct. I don't. I and, know that. And that's a part of the condition being right. Exactly. It's not going to flow. But is, is it the condition that I must hold God's definition of love or I'm willing to change my definition through the reception of the love? Well, you have to be willing to change your definition. It's not yeah. going to necessarily be through the reception of love that causes you to change your definition. Mm -hmm. The definition okay. has to change before the reception occurs. Yep. So that's going to have to be done through some other effort of yours. Got you. Right, relating to wanting to work through the reasons why you don't want to receive love. Yes. And yeah. a lot of that, as I've pointed out already, is about our emotional injuries about love, what happened to us. Totally. You know, yeah. like you pointed out earlier in the conversation, you said, you know, having someone else to love is just another job. Yeah. Well, there's a whole whole, <laughs> a whole, whole, lot, in whole lot of false beliefs there yeah. that are opposite the reception of God's love that yeah. need to be corrected. Otherwise, you can't receive God's yeah. love. You know, none of that's true mm -hmm. about real love. No. That's only true about the world's definition of love, which we've already established in the assistance groups. Uh, is evil. Evil, yeah. the opposite of love. <laughs> yeah. And often evil as yeah. well, <laughs> you know, completely the opposite of love. Yeah. So, you know, you know I, I just feel like, again, we can fool ourselves and go, oh, I believe it in my mind. I really do. And I'm going, hang on a sec, just give up this whole thing about believing it in your mind. If you're not receiving love, there's something you don't believe, even in your mind. Totally. So what is it? Yes. You work through sincerity, work through sincerely yeah. what that is that's causing yeah. you to not have a proper desire, a sincere desire to receive. Yeah. Then you will receive. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And And this is where I feel... You know, we get really up the creek because of the facade. Yes. We put, we're put. used to in our childhood putting forward a facade. Oh, I do understand. I get it. I get it. When yeah. in our heart we don't get it. Yeah. Or we, or we put forward a facade of this is what I'm like when in our heart it's not really what mm -hmm. we're like and so forth. So, you know, this is where we have a whole heap of, we could say, pollution of the soul has occurred through our experiences, through our childhood and our growing years that cause us to have a very 
uh, distorted concept of what sincerity really is. Yes. And and that's a huge problem when it comes to receiving God's love. Yep, for sure. Mm. For sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the two statements are not uh, opposites of each other like they may first appear in this paragraph. Mm -hmm. They are basically supporting each other if we understand their general gist. And the general thing what I was trying to say was the soul who wants to receive God's love must first prepare itself through, through a number of different things, but we can't of ourselves force the love in yes. to a soul that's unprepared. Yeah, yeah. Won't work. <laughs> cool. Now, just before we move on, mm -hmm. there's one part in the previous um, sentence that I forgot to clarify with you. Yep. Because um, we talked about having this condition of development that will cause the love to find lodgment. Mm -hmm. But you talked about it being harmonious and satisfactory to the qualities of its own existence. So I take that to mean very similar to what you said in the first part, that there's a condition now within me that is harmonious with the divine love existing within me. Yes, and it's not a condition of perfection. Yeah. This is the uh, amazing thing. If it was a condition of perfection, we would have to become perfect before we received God's love. And that's not what God expects. This is a condition of our viewpoints of love mm -hmm. and our viewpoints of sincerity, mm -hmm. humility, truth, which mm -hmm. is all about of sincerity, and our desire. These are the conditions yes. that, that are the conditions that we're referring to specifically. Yep. It's not a condition of how moral we are or how ethical we are or how honest we are or how great we are or how good we've become or how perfect we are or any of these things, mm -hmm. because if it was, it would be highly unlikely any of us would receive it until we were completely perfect. And that would be a much more difficult process. Yes, and, and part of what we've <laughs> talked about in the previous discussions is the gift that God is giving us in terms of being able to change our nature, the structure of who we are through the reception of this love so we don't have to actually do like all that work which would be impossible anyway. Yeah, but, remember you know. we say effort here or work yeah. is about the changing the internal conditions to allow the love to enter. Mm -hmm. It's not about forcing the love to enter. Uh, it's about changing the internal conditions where it can enter. And it's also not about forcing ourselves to be in a certain love. Uh, in a certain condition. A certain condition. In a yes. certain display of love. You know? Yes, it's to be God, it, in basically. Fact, it's quite the opposite. Love it's about enter. being sincere. So that, that yeah. means if we're in a terrible state of love, we're honest and we go, <laughs> yeah. I'm really screwed up when it yeah. comes to love. And I've got no idea what I'm talking about here. And, and I'm not the love, love, love thing, you know, yeah. that all the many yeah. of the new age or Christian people go, oh, I'm so loving, I'm yeah. so loving, yeah. when, yeah. when yeah. quite frequently they are not. Yes. And, and it's quite obvious they are not. Um, it's nothing of that because uh, none of that is sincere, of course, mm -hmm. and none of it uh, addresses the underlying problem, which is there has to be a sincere to state in the soul before the love can sort of find God's love can find lodgment yes. in the soul. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, um, and presumably then, because people who receive God's love and then they stop receiving it, there's a change in the condition. Or there's a change, they're open to a point. Yep. But they've obviously a attained a certain p uh, condition to the point where that amount of love can and exist. Can exist in their soul. But not but beyond no that. more. Yeah. And mm. so that's where there's more work on the condition. Correct. And yep. Yes. And this is uh, going to be a continual process even beyond our, the celestial sphere state, although at that point we are now completely connected with the flow of God's love, mm -hmm. there's still further conditions of development that need to be met in order for more love to flow. Yeah. So while a certain amount of love now is flowing continuously at the point of it being a celestial spirit, uh, the, there's not uh, an uh, infinite supply of love flowing mm -hmm. because that requires growth, change in other directions. So. What we learn in this process still has to continue beyond our perfection, yeah. beyond the time when we become perfect from God's perspective. We still need to make further issues of you know, further growth. We must further prepare the soul for lodgment of further things yeah. Yeah. in the same manner that we prepared the soul for the lodgment of love. 
but there's a certainty or a surety to a certain point about love, about truth, about Well, by the faith. time we're in this list of kingdom, we're not only it's not certainty, it's actual fact. So, Sorry, so, I meant to the level that we've received the love, then correct. there is certainty. And then yep. we have to work on condition and then we receive more love and then there's certainty and surety in us about those issues that never changes. Yeah, and also there's the inside of us, we can make a decision to not do what the love demands which I frequently yes. see people do. Yeah. So sometimes they receive some love and you know they've received some love. Then the love demands certain things of them. Like there's one guy I knew, you know, he, he's received some of God's love. He, I know uh, I know him well and he's received some of God's love. And he's very opposed now to what we do, mm -hmm. you know, because, because he was triggered by some emotional injuries around pleasing people. Mm -hmm. And as a result of these emotional injuries about pleasing people, the people who complain the most are the people now who he tries to please. Yeah. And as a result, he can't receive any more of God's love. But he has received some. Mm -hmm. But but he will not do what the love demands. The love demands that he no longer pleases people. Yeah. That's what yeah. the love demands. Yeah. God's love is such that you no longer just go around doing things to please people. He also had an injury of wanting uh, uh, status. status and yeah. uh, acknowledgement from people as well. So now he's received a little bit of love, but but while he retains this wanting status and wanting acknowledgement, well, you know, that's wanting superiority over mm. people now. That's out of harmony with love too. Yep. So while he continues to act in that injury, he's, he's going against what the love would yeah, ask him to that's do. That's right. And the irony is is he did ask me about his progress and I did say to him that these two things are the reasons why he got very angry with me about mm -hmm. raising those two things, ironically angry about the very thing that's stopping him from progressing yeah. and causing him not to receive more love. That happens so often. And that is frequently the case. But I'm really glad that you raised that as an example because not only for what you've just said, but also because it demonstrates that we don't have to be in a very high condition of love to receive God's love. To receive God's love, but we have to change some things about our perception of love. Yes, and be willing to, yeah, and to receive more we and, must more be and more and more. We're willing more. to change infinitely. Yeah, we have to be willing to change infinitely. What I've found is that most people are not yeah. willing to change infinitely. They will change to a point. But when their true biggest addictions get get confronted, challenged. challenged, after that, they sort of draw the line there. Mm. And hence the flow of love stops until they are willing again to enter this right this state, the state of being willing, open to yep. confront where the errors of love are within themselves that they're now trying to act again in disharmony to the love that's already within them. Yeah, and it's quite a painful state actually. And yeah. most of the fourteen who, who are on the planet yeah. today are in this very painful state of acting in disharmony with the love that is in them. And you can do that. And in mm -hmm. fact, in the Paget messages and other messages we've stated, you can do that. Yeah, um, you can act in complete disharmony with the love you've received. It's a very painful place to be. Mm. A very, very painful, self-destructive place. Actually, you need a lot of addictions. And a not lot of only, them end up being self-destructive addictions. From yeah, not only self-destructive addictions, but you need a lot of fear to be in that place too. Yeah, the fear, fear is, of humankind, fear yeah. of people, fear of what people think of you, fear of family, fear of friends, fear of society, mm. fear, you know, there's a huge amount of fear that causes you to enter these states that you're unwilling to let go of the fear, you see. Yeah. Like the fear is in you, it's under your control, it's not yeah. under control of the love. Yeah, You know, you can receive love and f get more fearless, mm -hmm. but only by releasing the fear as you receive more love. Yeah, so, but you're saying there a person doesn't have to have released their fear in order to receive the love. No. They have to. But they have to be willing to do what the love that enters them demands, which is to release the fear at some mm. point in the future. This is why I often catch myself <laughs> feeling that I must only be willing to change my current ideas of what love is. Mm -hmm. If I'm willing to loosen the grasp on that mm -hmm. and experience God's love. And be sincere. And be sincere. 
yep. then I don't actually have to have God's definition of love. I just you, need you wait to, until you've received some more and more and more of his yes, love. Yes, so. so I just have to be willing to change my attitude towards love and yes, to and deal it, with some of my injured ideas about love. And also when that love does find lodgment, what are you going to do about its lodging there now? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. the love, once it's lodged, is going to demand certain things of you. When I say demand, it, it, it feels bad if you don't do them. So, for example, if some of the love lodges inside of you, it's going to ask you to treat everyone equally. Yeah. Every time you treat somebody out of harmony with equality, yeah. you're going to be out of harmony with the love that's inside of you and it's going to hurt you. Mm. It's going to hurt. And this is where you have to engage more and more addictions and things to suppress. Let go of them. Oh, you mean? Or? No, oh. you have to. Once that happens, yep. there's love in you. <clears throat> You want to ignore it and do. You have to engage a lot of suppression techniques. Yes. In order to detune from the pain of that. Yes. Because um, it is like it is then like it's knocking. So you can actually receive God's love and remain in the hells. Yeah. If you don't act in harmony with what it is asking of you. Yeah. And that's easier on earth to do than it is in the spirit world, would you say? Uh, yes, a lot easier usually yeah. because when the spirit world, once you receive some of God's love, your your environment changes and mm -hmm. your condition changes and you can see both changes. Yeah. And so then it's highly unlikely that you'll see that you won't see its cause. Mm. But and also on in the spirit world, once your condition changes and receive some of the love, you're in an environment where there's less potential of attack. Mm -hmm. And if there's less potential of attack, then obviously some of the fear that you might have is no longer getting triggered. Yeah. Whereas on Earth, it's very different. Uh, on Earth, once you become quite different to the people around you, there's a higher, usually a higher incidence of attack, mm -hmm. a higher incidence of you being pulled down or denigrated and so forth. And for most people, that, that, that level of attack and denigration and condescension and ridicule is not something they're capable of coping with very well. And so they then revert back to just meeting their addictions. Mm. That, of course, stops the flow of further love mm. entering them. But the love that has already entered them can't be, un be unentered. It can't, can't enter. It can't go siphoned away. It off, yep. can't be siphoned off. And so that creates a disharmonious, a greater disharmonious state within them and usually a lot more unhappiness. Mm. And so that, that's the subsequent side effect of receiving some of the love and then not acting in harmony with its yeah, operations. With it, yeah. So, but, but here you said um, there's satisfact the conditions are satisfactory to it still existing. So they're still, they're still... To the point that they've received you it. Yeah, you can't like kind of get rid of that condition. No, no. Once you make a shift in your soul with regard to your attitude to love and your attitude to um, uh, sincerity and you, in, in certain aspects and mm. your attitude to desire, some of the love will be received, mm. but, but it can't continuously flow mm -hmm. unless you begin to act in harmony with the love you've already received. Mm. Now, if you choose to no longer act in harmony with the love you've already received, Usually the conditions to receive the first bit are still there, mm. but, but you're now creating other conditions through fear that cause further bits to not be received. And does that mean that I could, say, get out of the hells, enter the first sphere mm -hmm. through the reception of God's love, and then, ooh, this is while I'm on earth, yep. um, and then act so much in disharmony with God's love that I end up back in a hellish condition. And on top of that, with that, a love still in you. Which would be far more painful. Which would be far more painful. Yeah. Yes. You can do that, yes. Mm. And you can do that relatively, when I say it's, it's easy to do to meet your addictions, but unfortunately you're going to find the whole thing pretty painful too. Yeah. So, which, which is understandable given the fact that you're now operating in disharmony with the love that you've already received. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that is a case on earth, unfortunately, where a person can receive the love and then usually God leads you to the next thing that you need to address mm -hmm. through this process. You expose a certain injury inside of yourself that you need to address. 
instead of addressing it, you decide through the use of your desire to actually not address it and suppress it mm. further mm -hmm. and meet more addictions. Now, in that process, you now degrade your condition. Mm -hmm. right? You've still received the love that can't exit from you. Mm -hmm. Now your degraded condition and the love are in disharmony to each other quite significantly. Mm -hmm. and you're going to have pain. Mm. And that, that is a feedback mechanism that's telling you that you're heading in the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, wrong way, go back. Yeah. 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 So it's no, a loving mechanism really that God's provided to show you that you are living in the wrong, you know, moving in the wrong direction. And by pain, I'm referring specifically to the emotional pain. Yeah. If you're sensitive emotionally, you will feel the emotional pain mm. of your conscience bothering you more. Mm -hmm. You'll feel that everything is not right. There's something wrong with the choices you've made. But unfortunately for most people on earth, their addictions are so much in a frenzy yeah. that they're not very sensitive to the emotional pain they're in satisfying them. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's keep going. Yes, yeah, so I then said the only means by which this can be accomplished. Can we just clarify what this is? Yes, the inflowing of love into the soul mm -hmm. uh, the, with, for, via the work of the Holy Spirit. The only means by which this can be accomplished are prayer and faith. When a man in true earnestness and sincere aspirations prays to the Father for this divine love, such prayer not only brings love, but causes those portions of the soul which are capable of receiving this love to open up to its coming and work in such a way as to attract the love. Mm. So you've already talked about this idea of faith mm -hmm. and true earnestness and sincere aspirations. So that's mm -hmm. our attitude to truth and humility. Which and is again, really faith. Which again, is faith, it? yeah. Sincere aspiration. And this desire, which is the prayer. Yes. Prayer is the desire for, for it to happen, the mm -hmm. desire for the love to enter you. Yeah. So these are all, you're not saying something different here. This is the conditions that you're referring to. Yes. And uh, the attitude of the soul, the, the, you know, for, that are part of the conditions, to, you know, the conditions by which, as we set up, and the, and the, the development that causes it to find lodgment. Yeah. These are, these are the things that we need to develop, a desire. You know, it's very, very hard to develop desires when you're in so much fear. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to develop a desire when your belief systems are all completely the opposite of what the desire needs to be. Yeah. yeah. So, if you, you know, if you believe there's no such thing as God, then it's going to be very hard for you to have a desire to receive any love from God because you don't even believe there's a God. Yeah. If you don't believe love really is real, then it's going to be very, very, very hard for you to re to desire love sincerely when you don't even believe it's real. Mm. But an extra part that will help you with sincerity is going, I don't believe love is real, God, but if there is real, can I have some? <laughs> you know, th that's more sincere yep. than saying, oh, I'm going to try to believe it's real when I really don't think it's real. <laughs> so again, this is where you're talking about the humility to change my current understanding of love the willingness to do that is more important than having the kind of correct viewpoint of love correct as it yeah. exists yes. in the universe yes yeah, yeah as god god would define yeah. it mm. the other really interesting thing you say in this little section is that there are portions of the soul which are capable of receiving this love so that that's just another interesting kind of scientific fact so, yeah, mm. that there's actually parts of me that are specifically designed to receive God's love. Yes, and, and that makes sense if you think about it. Total Remember sense, that yeah. God's got a substance. God's existing outside of the universes. God's got a substance that he wants to give somebody inside the universes. The Holy Spirit allows the distribution of this substance to the individual, mm -hmm. but the individual soul also needs to be capable of receiving it. Mm -hmm. and so there's portions of your soul that God designed specifically to receive the love, and then the love has a transforming effect on that soul. But yeah. it's like a mechanism. A, you, you could almost call it a connection point if, mm -hmm. that, of the soul that, that is required, portions of the soul. Now, what I'm saying here is desire, faith, prayer, open those portions of the soul yep. to the reception of love. So they actually, if you could observe it, physically observe it, you will actually, you know, so a, so a person, a soul pair that's in a union condition can observe the operation 
of the of the soul in the state of opening up to receiving God's love. And you can actually see the portions of the mm. soul that open when you pray. It's amazing. They actually open up and allow for God's the Holy Spirit to connect. It's almost like uh, you could think of it like a docking station between That's two exactly space, spaceships, couldn't you? Say, yeah. you? You know, the spaceships have to connect and then there's things that have to open up on either way for passageway to occur. To occur. Yeah, and it's like the 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 um, pipe can't connect unless the docking station is, is right open. in the right spot. Yes. and then and then nothing can open yet until things open on both ends. Yes. All right now, yeah. God's end is always open, of course. Yeah. But it's our end, this, yeah. you know, which we might call the space station. Then <laughs> that that we need to have yeah. open up there's conditions that it's going to cause it i open. think god's a space station and where there's a ship <laughs> with a little ship maybe. <laughs> yeah. but the, the you can see that it, there's a conditions that must exist yeah um and for, otherwise it's just it's not there's no purchase for the for no, the they have to line up love they to have dock. to meet they have to dock they have yeah, to open, open. Up. there's usually you know an equalization in the case of a space station of pressures yeah and so for all that has to happen before you can walk through yeah and and these particular things are a part of the conditions of flow free flow yeah three free access and and this is the same with our soul we have parts of our soul that are mechanisms if you like mm. that only open with prayer and faith mm. and they actually physically open portions of our soul that then respond to the you know the, the allow the connection of the Holy Spirit and respond to the inflow of God's love. Yeah, beautiful, mm. beautiful. Now perhaps we need to have a break and go to the toilet. Yeah, so, yeah. So let's, let's do, do that, that and uh, give everyone else a break and go to the toilet as well. <laughs> 